Okay, welcome back. Today we have a 2009 Ford Escape that needs rear drum brakes. So we're gonna be changing the shoes, the hardware, and the drums because at that point, at this point, by the time it actually gets to the point you need to change the shoes, you're at 160,000 miles plus. Everything's just worn out back there and exceeding uh, specs. So you wanna change it all at once and it'll be good for probably the rest of the life of the vehicle at that point. Now this one, when there's some pad material left but it's getting so far out on, on the shoes and the adjustment there, and the drums themselves are glazed pretty bad, we're just gonna change it all and change it preemptively. And this way I can get you a video and my brakes will get back to full operational um, status and no noise, obviously. Whenever th anything breaks on my vehicle, I or any noise or anything like that, I attack it right away. That's just the way I am. So today we're gonna go over in detail from the removal, to the installation, to the adjustment, to the burnishing afterwards. Let's get to it. Okay, now as far as the brake shoes and drums and hardware, I actually am gonna be using a bunch of different companies, mainly because of availability of the kits. It seems certain items are harder to get than others, and of course there was a price point for certain things like the spring hardware. So you can get the Raybestos brand. It's a nice quality kit for spring hardware. It includes everything you need. And it's a lot cheaper than the Motorcraft version. It has all new springs, retainer pins, and even the plugs for the backside of the drum in case you lost one, your dog ate one or whatever. Um, you have all new to do it right. Now the brake shoes themselves, I usually use Wagner Thermal Quiet Ceramics, um, but they don't make them for the Escape. They only make their basic uh, standard line for the Escape. So for the price on Amazon, I went with the Ford, you know, Motorcraft brake shoes in the back. So I have a nice organic pad that's nice and quiet and it'll last obviously a long time. Now drums, the Motorcraft drums, are high quality but they're very expensive so the alternative is to use something like this the AC Delco professional uh, line not the regular line the advantage you want to use the professional line and I think these are $25 a piece and they're, they're made a lot higher quality than the basic aftermarket stuff so they're kind of like on the same level as Motorcraft being a, a GM brand, um, but you can give like twenty-five dollars instead of fifty each. So, like I said, I'll link to all this stuff down below, so you have your numbers and your your options out there. Um, open these up. Ah, jeez, package pretty well too. Now these, unlike the Motorcraft ones will come bare. And as you probably know already, your rims are pretty open on the Escape. So what I'm gonna be doing to this one is cleaning off the oil with some brake clean, nice and clean, and then we're gonna prime it and paint it black like the factory. Okay, so while our drums are drying over there, we're gonna go ahead and jack the vehicle up, get the tire off of there, they're 19 millimeter lugs, and make sure you have a quality jack stand under the pinch weld right here so we can support the vehicle safely. These drums, they'll stick in the center here where the hub's at, uh, but otherwise they generally, as you can see, they don't stick on the shoes. They clean up very well on the backside, unlike the Tauruses, which will stick on there make you want to curse. Uh, so, same thing as a rotor. Give that a hit and it'll break free. Now you see there's a lot of brake dust coming out of here. You want to do this in an open area, preferably not windy so it gets blown around and all that. Uh, you don't want that. And then you're going to pull this off and you're going to hold it like this. And the reason being 
as you see all that brake dust down in there, you want to capture all that. You don't want to just fling it around. Okay, now the next thing you want to do is get a drain pan underneath this, like a well drain pan. And we're going to rinse this whole area off with brake clean. That'll cap down, get most of the dust out of here and get it down into the pan instead of just blowing it out of here like that. Um, as you can see, these are pretty darn simple inside of here. What you don't want to do is take apart this side and the other side at the same time. And then you have a question about what goes where exactly and you have no reference. So the other side is like a mirror image. Everything is reversed but you'll see where everything hooks into on the shoes and all that. It can get confusing. All right, so let's clean this off. Okay, while this is still wet, preferably, you want to start wiping things down. Um, get the bulk of that off of here. Okay. And I also use compressor. And you can see with me using compressed air, I didn't really see no dust coming off of there. And that just goes to show how well it cleans it um, off of there. With the brake clean like that. Makes it a lot safer to work on these. Now the one other thing to note before taking all this apart is if there's any leaks from the wheel cylinder either side uh, before you start taking this apart. As you can see with me cleaning it, it makes it nice and clean to work on everything and see where everything's at. Now might be a good time to take a picture, a nice snapshot of this with your phone so you can tell exactly where to go um, going back together on here. Now because all these springs on here are pretty beefy compared to other models out there, you're going to want to have uh, some basic brake tools on hand, something like this. It's used for so many things on these. Um, both ends, there's so many different uses with the different hooks on here. Great tool to have on hand. I'll link to all these tools down below that I'm talking about. Um, this one's useful for these, for the retainers. You can grab them and turn them and it'll pop them off of there. I'll link to that. Good pair of needle nose pliers. For some of these hard to get to ones, you may grab them and pull them over. And what I use in the end is a brake gauging tool. What this will do is it'll take an inside measurement of the drum and then we can take that and come over here and size up the adjustment for the shoes exactly to that drum. That way your drum just slides on, done, adjusted, down the road it goes. Otherwise there's another method which I'll show in case you don't want to go out and buy this tool. Okay, here we go. These springs are really strong on here and it's going to be a fight going, taking it off and, and going back in, especially going back in. Um, so I might get in the way of the camera here, but just bear with me. Like I said, take a photo of it before you start taking it apart and don't touch the other side until one side is done. So what you got to do first off on here is take off these retainers that hold the shoes to the backing plate. And that's where this tool right here comes into play. Put your finger on the back side where that pin goes through and then you simply push this in. And it doesn't work too well in the factory ones. And you're supposed to line it up with the slot so you can take it out of there. Now if it doesn't work on the factory ones, which it kind of doesn't, it works on the um, aftermarket spring har hardware. What you can do is get a regular slip joint pliers or a needle nose and the same thing. You're pushing it in and you're lining it up and it'll literally fall out like that. You see the holes in there, there's one slot that's open and the other way it's uh, it holds it in there, it's got a groove. Same thing on this side. 
go in, grab it like that, okay? And then push in and then turn. And that slot will line up and it'll fall apart. Now, like I said, these springs up here that hold the shoes in, and same thing down here, real pain to take off if you're trying to use um, this brake tool right here, okay? It's just a real pain. They're super strong, it's gonna be a fight. What I do is I take a pry bar against the hub flange right here, and you simply pry out on the, uh, on the shoes themselves until they come out of the wheel cylinder. So it comes out. Like this side right here can come down. And now this side has the, uh, the brake me mechanism on it. Uh, whereas this side, same thing kind of. You just want to get it out of here without tearing that boot. And then everything will kind of come together. It's all loose. Same thing down here. Kind of move them in a little bit like that. And move them in. And just get it out from behind there. Like so. They'll come together. And they'll fall right off. It's that simple. Otherwise, we'll be fighting this for 15 minutes. Now, this lower spring and this big long top spring, all the same, um, but the spring for the, um, the adjuster in here is different side to side. So once this is all loose, we're gonna concentrate on getting them collapsed in so we can simply grab the spring and take it off of there. Now it also helps if you push the adjuster, you spin the adjuster, so it comes in. Um, in general, it should go pretty easy. I know mine are adjusted way out, compensating for wear. these in the pan and pull this side off into the pan and then this whole thing will come off together just keep bringing the adjuster in because we need to have it all the way in when we're going back together anyways just bring it all the way in like so and we should be able to unhook this now That'll come out. Keep all this together uh, so you can match up the new spring on there. Now, this is where it gets fun. We need to get the uh, this part, this lever right here for the parking brake off of here. So there's a nice little spring down here. So you pick up on that spring and bring it out and you'll be able to see everything that way. What I do to get it off anyways is I will um, use a cat claw, like I, like I said before, I use this thing for freaking everything. And uh, gonna get underneath there, either pry it out of there, or get it in there and pull that spring pressure back. Kind of like that. You're pulling the spring back on there. Like that, and then this whole thing will just slide right out of here. Woo! And that's it. The shoes are off of there. Now comes the cleanup. I generally spray the whole backing plate with some brake clean and give it a good wiping. Get all the old brake dust out of here and rust and everything else. And then we'll start uh, lubricating it to go back together.
On the escapes, it seems they don't have a rust issue, uh, whereas like Taurus vehicles, um, those Explorers, they all seem to have rust issues in the backing plate, especially those darn Super Duties. What is it, 03 to 07 Super Duties? The, uh, the pinholes here, the bagging plate is so darn thin, they had such a rust issue, they pull through on there. And they had to get whole new backing plates and hub seals and all kinds of stuff uh, just to replace the backing plate on. It's very expensive. It's like the backing plate and some bolts and brackets uh, per side was like $250 each side. <laughs> very expensive, plus labor, plus the seals. Plus all the brake parts. You can see where that's going. I actually have a fix for that. I may go over in a future video. Uh, without pulling back and plate off of there. This one's super thick, man. This will never have a problem. Okay, so we're cleaned off. We're clean enough. You can use some compressed air in here this time. And then we use some uh, dielectric grease, brake caliper grease, on each one of these contact points on the backing plate. And this will provide that high temperature protection on here and lubrication. So it doesn't make any squeak noises. And there's quite a few contacts on this one actually. And I apply it pretty generous on there, nothing too crazy. And because it's metal to metal up here and here at the wheel cylinder, I'll just give a little bit to that groove in there. And the same thing down here at the anchor point on the inside where that shoe is going to be in there. Just a little bit so it's just not, you know, dry, metal to metal, vibrating and squeaking, causing problems. All right, not too bad. So at this point, let's fight to get this shoe, the new shoe, um, onto this parking brake. It's gonna be a real chore, but I have a trick I wanna show you um, to get it on there easier, much easier. Now the shoes, I think the, now both sides in this one are different, so make sure you match your um, shoes up with the new ones, because they are different side to side, both of these are. Um, so, the other side's already done on this vehicle. So I know this is my shoe right here, and it'll match up on there. So at this point, because we're going to start touching the friction material, and we just greased, we just touched grease, let's go ahead and clean our hands, or change gloves. You know what, I'm going to change gloves. Okay, so here comes the fun part, we need to pull back the spring on this parking brake cable enough so we can slip the lever for the parking brake on the shoe here. So it's gotta be at least that wide on there. And you can pull all freaking day and it's a real freaking pain uh, to get this off of here. So there's no real good way to do it. What I do is I use a vice grips and we're gonna clamp onto the end of the cable all the way to the very edge there. It's right there at the edge and clamp, okay? And then we're gonna take a diagonal cutter to get underneath the spring and pry up on it so it compresses the spring enough. And then we're gonna, we're gonna grip down on it just enough to hold the spring in place. We're not gonna cut into the cable, we're just holding it in place. These cables are really friggin' strong on here, so this is how it looks basically. It, it can be tricky at times, but I'm underneath there already and you want to get pretty far in there and we're going to pry up off the head of the um, channel locks there and then you simply take it and you hook it into there and the idea is to get it back far enough and we could do something like that and after that just make sure it's fully seated on there it's not a real big thing once it's in there it's in there really but I like to seat it in there all the way. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is take this shoe 
up onto the vacuum plate and retain it with a pin, spring, and retainer on there. And the way it goes is the pin, your new pin goes through the back side, and then it goes through the shoe, and then you put a spring on there, and then you put the retainer on there. Just like that. So it's kind of tricky, but this tool, um, which I had earlier here, works great for that. It makes it a lot easier. A lot easier. So let's go ahead and retain this side. Get it up onto there. Now this cable down here, we popped it out of a little guide down there. You'll see it just clips back into there. And this will kind of just sit here then. Put the pin in through the back side, through this hole right here, the round hole. And you want to get that pin as straight as possible so it has as much length as possible. Put the spring on here, and then we'll take our tool and put the retainer in there. And what's nice, it has holes in the side of it so you can see what the heck you're doing. You're going to line up the slot in this with the slot in the um, pin. And then turn. I just had it there too. Something like that. And you'll see there's a cross section right there that has the, the hole in it, you know, the slot, and then this side does not. So once it's in there, it's in there, you know. And at this point, let's go ahead and adjust this so it sits real nice and straight. Like that. Okay, now the way this adjuster goes in there, it goes in just like this. The shallow portion of it is towards the front. Okay, just like that, and we'll hook into the lower portion of that shoe, and then this part goes down on this side. So let's go ahead and try to hook it into here. It hooks into the back side of this right here, and then of course into that slot. So just like that. And then I'll take it up and back into there like that. We can go ahead and just kind of plop this down into place for right now. So once that's in there, just be careful so we don't lose it. And I'll go ahead and pin this side in. Let's see, where's the hole? Where's the hole? I can't find a friggin' hole. Where'd it go? Same thing, straight as possible, find a slot on there, and get it through. Oh, did it left handed, I'm not a lefty. Okay, so that's all together, I'm hooked in down here. I'll straighten this real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and hook this in on this side. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to leave it like that. Leave it all the way compressed in um, the adjuster on there. Leave this spring alone, okay? We're going to concentrate on bringing these shoes together and bringing these pistons together with this guy right here. Okay, that's the upper spring on there. 
So pretty much just hooks in, bolt sides on there. Okay. I'll show you a little trick for getting this on here. Okay, now this is where this little fancy tool comes in handy, is going back on with springs, whether it be the end here, this end here, or up here in the hooks. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook it in on top there, as shown. You want these two shoes together, so you're not pulling so far. And just hold them so they don't pop right back out. Okay, now you're gonna take the hook and just one end of it right here that is attached to the hook, which is this one. Okay, you're gonna hook it. That side's already in. And then you're not gonna touch this other handle, you're just touching the one that's connected to the hook. And you're gonna concentrate on getting it into the slot on there. And because everything's connected in like that, uh, it shouldn't take too much. Wow. Now it's right friggin' there. Um, what you can do is use a needle nose and just help it into there. Like so. And that makes it very easy going back in. Just make sure everything's all the way in. Looks good. We're not rubbing on anything. Same thing up here. Now we can go for this one right here. And because it is compressed in, um, it makes it much easier. This one you can almost do something like this because it's sucked in so much. Helps out a lot. Okay, so we're hooked in on this side and this side. What we can do is go down here and complete the springs. Now this little sucker right here is stronger than all the rest of them. Um, you don't want to fight it. It's going to be a nightmare. This is what I do. Okay. Pull these out from the anchor point and pull them forward of the anchor point and push them in. Same thing with this side. Everything should be nice and free and I'll allow you to do that. Then, what you do is you, well, I think at one point you can actually do this by hand. Um, they're so close. But even with a um, needle nose, Let's see this one, this one's really and you can see right there, this thing's ultra loose. So we're perfect. Now at this point we're gonna use our pry bar and we're gonna bring this shoe back and then in behind the anchor point here. So we'll use a pry bar right here on the shoe. Like that. And then the same exact thing on the other side. This side be even easier though, there's nothing in the way. So let me show you on this side. We're prying from right there, so. What I do is there's a, a bolt behind here that holds the backing plate on. Use that for an anchor point. And then you get it behind it like that. Okay, at this point, everything's together on here. Just go over each one of the springs. Make sure they're fully hooked in. Make sure they're in the right spots. There's still no leaks from the wheel cylinders. These springs are on here nice and straight. And of course, they're in the right cross section. We're hooked behind fully down here. And everything just looks right. After that, we can go ahead and start adjusting the shoes outward to match the new brake drums. Okay, now what I use to um, measure the inside of the drum 
to go over and adjust the shoes is something like this, where it's made just for this, this uh, purpose. So you take it, you spread it out inside of here, get nice and even, okay? And then you have a measurement on this side for your shoes. So you just go up to it and you measure it. And you adjust them until it fits this perfectly. And then you slide this on, everything's kosher. Other thing you do is get a general measurement with a tape measure. 10 inches on the inside, okay, let's go adjust. That's up to you. Now the way these are adjusted is the same as any other drum brake. Uh, there's a star adjuster right here, and you just turn it, and it'll actually expand out the adjuster, therefore expand the shoes out to the right size. So if you don't know what direction it's going, just keep turning it until you start seeing threads. Okay, you'll start seeing threads, no sweat, and you'll know you're going the right direction. And because right now, you already have it all the way to the end of the thread. So if you're turning it and you're starting to see threads, you're going right in the right direction. After a while, you're going to start hearing this. And that's the star wheel clicking over that cam lock on the back side. So it'll, it'll go this direction out, but that keeps it from the wheel going this way. So you can see I can't go this way on the wheel. So it only goes one direction. You gotta press on that to contract them back in. So for right now, we're just going out and we're going to expand it so that it meets our adjustment. So you put it right in the center, like that. And you can see it's loose, and then you can look on the side here and see what kind of gap there is. Um, obviously, same thing applies. Straighten it out. And you got your 10 inches. I mean, it's the best you can do, really. That's why this tool is so nice. Because it'll fit in there. You could get a feel for it and everything. So I'd say a little bit more. You know, start to feel it get tight on there too. Now this is pretty close. The ultimate test is placing the drum onto there. Now, what happens is when you're working on these shoes, one could be high, one could be low. What you wanna do is kind of straighten them out on here so that you can fit your drum on here. And just line up your, your studs there. Okay, just like that. And then you kind of feel for it. And what this will also do by spinning this, it'll center those shoes in there. So at this point, it's pretty, pretty darn good adjustment on there. You hear that slight drag? That's perfect. You don't want us, uh, too much of a drag that you can't turn it by hand because then it's going to smoke it and glaze it and all that stuff. What this will do is it will get it right to the edge there and then um, we'll be good. Have a nice firm brake pedal that way. Perfect. Okay, that's all there is to changing brake shoes and drums and hardware on a Ford Escape. Now I would say this um, applies to all Ford Escapes up until 2012. 13 was the redesign and everything changed after that. Um, so this covers a lot of model years and the same techniques I used to get past and uh, work around the springs that are so hard to uh, you know stretch out and hook. The same concept, the same tricks can be applied to any drum brake system out there. This one's definitely a lot different in the exact setup of the adjuster and everything compared to any of the, anything else in the Ford lineup. So I don't know if that's because it's based off the Mazda Tribute or what. Um, but it definitely works and they definitely last a long time. Once you do these, this should be the last time you have to do drum brakes on your vehicle. Okay, so the final step, burnishing the shoes into the drum surface itself. 
You wanna do this with uh, medium pressure and I'll kinda go through it on the road test here. The very first thing you wanna do is start the vehicle in park and put your foot on the brake a couple of times. Make sure you have that firm pedal that feels normal, you know, so you know you have uh, full gripping power on the brakes and that there's not an issue back there with them coming apart or you did something wrong. Because then the pedal is just gonna constantly travel to the floor no matter what and your front brakes will not work either so make sure you get that good hard pedal and we can get out of here first thing i do usually you go these low speeds you're backing out or something like this i listen for the drums in the brake hardware make sure they're not squealing or dragging making any kind of weird noises there's certain brakes on certain vehicles that have to be installed a certain way and if they're not they can either dig into each other get cocked in there or they can actually cock the caliper so bad, like in the F-150s, it digs into your wheel. Um, so I listen, and then you go for your test drive, and you want to drive normal. A lot of people have misconception that you want to just slam on the brakes, heat them up, and just burnish them into each other. No, you don't want to do that. You don't want light pressure either. You want to get the brakes warmed up so they can actually go into each other. It's the same thing as um, you have a rough piece of wood and you have a piece of sandpaper, okay, and the sandpaper is the pads. Um, you, you, the surface of the wood is not matching the sandpaper um, because they are not burnished into each other. Yeah, you go over it a couple of times and all of a sudden they start um, matching each other, let's just say, the, the stroke marks and all that stuff. And uh, that's kind of what we're doing here, kind of. So you want to drive normally and then you want to just hit the brakes at a medium um, application all the way to a dead stop. That way you get that full um, application for the longest period of time at medium pressure. You don't wanna do a quick short stop um, with low rolling speed. You wanna do regular speeds, 20, 30 miles an hour, and you hit the brakes early so you have a nice drawn out braking application. So we'll uh, go down the road here. Uh, to a country road here and then we'll pick back up here Okay, so here we are turning out to a country road where I can stop anytime I want um, The one thing I noticed is that as you probably saw my brakes were they had enough thickness left to and they were just glazed over weren't gripping as well Putting new brake pads on there and drums and all that and you know, of course the inner diameter the inside diameter of the drum is, is back to spec and all that stuff the pedal feels 10 times better. It just grips both front and rear instead of the front's doing all the work. So we're in a country road, same thing. You can gradually go up to higher speeds, 45, 55. Okay, we're still doing 45 right now, and we're slowing down. Median application for an extended period of time. All the way till you stop. And this is a good time to listen for noise also. That's all you gotta do over and over again until you can feel the brakes feel normal. Um, that, that's literally all there is to it. If you cut the drums in the back, you had the drums cut, you decided to cut the drums, which I don't recommend, um, or you cut rotors, anything like that, just as a, as a tip, they're gonna take longer to burnish in because of the smooth pattern on there. There's no, um, there's no, there's nothing to dig into the pad to mate them together it's too smooth that's why you'll see a lot of the rotor manufacturers they have cross hatches cut in uh, to dig into the pad a little bit and burnish them in better but same thing like I said you just do it until it feels right and that's all there is to burnish in the pads beyond that you'll work them in better and better and they'll feel better and better as time goes on you want to get the initial burnishing done so that they're actually, you know, mating together properly and uh, they're like a match set then.